Tell us some good news from China. Hu Tao. I think I'd like to <clears throat> compare uh, your question and early, you know, the latest question together. So, and also the gyms. Uh, actually, uh, as I know, within China, both for the academic circle and the decision making, uh, they are debating whether or not, you know, believe or not, the science evidence. And actually, the China's decision making not only considering whether or not in the future, global really warming or sea level rising. That's only one factor. There are also some other factors. See, think about it. we burn the coal and natural gas, not only emit the greenhouse gas emission, carbon dioxide, also sulfur dioxide, mm. also nitrogens. We don't want to bear the polluted air mm. in living in uh, cities, right? So that's also some other considerations. Economy consideration, competitiveness in the future, and other, you know, many considerations, but also international political pressures too. So that's why I want directly back to at the beginning, Johan, you mentioned the question. China's uh, concept of scientific development is really based on the science, both for the natural science and the social science. That's I think, I'm sure, that's the Chinese leadership, you know, has made the, you know, decision uh, not only, you know, based on the natural science, also social science too, to maximize China's uh, own interest. Um, good news I want to share with you, uh, Johan. And we are now making the 12th five-year plan. That's for sure. China has continued the 11th five-year plan, 20, uh, 20% energy intensity, mm. but for the two hours, maybe a little bit less, but still China would emphasize on the target, that's for sure. And China is continue to develop its uh, renewable energy, as uh, Jim hoped, but I'm not sure whether China can continue to subsidize as before. The U.S. has already, if you read the news from the Department of Commerce of U.S., U.S. has a uh, Department of Commerce is going to have an uh, investigation on China subsidies for the renewable. Uh, so called by the Article 301, the domestic uh, trade law. And I don't know what's going to be happening after the midterm uh, uh, election. Maybe the situation get worse. China problem cannot to subsidize more in the future. That means the China's renewable energy Develop will be slower. That means, for the from the global perspective, more emissions will be increasing of mm. the greenhouse gas emission. That's for sure. So my simple, you know, I, we had a lot of discussion with uh, U.S. colleagues too. So my simple uh, solution to solve the problem is not to let U.S. to criticize China. Why U.S. cannot subsidize more? If you subsidize more, China and U.S. compete to subsidize. The global <laughs> will gain, right? A subsidy that's, war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's subsidy war. That's the solution. That's right. Uh, instead of a currency exchange where we can have a subsidy war for clean technologies. <laughs> yes, please, Jim, short. Yeah. Why don't, don't they sue to stop the subsidies of fossil fuels? Yeah. <laughs> um, That's, now, now we're really coming into concrete action. So we, yes. we'll, we'll sue unsustainable policy action, and then we'll have a new subsidy war between the U.S. and China. I think that's beautiful. We seem, to have, the yeah, we seem to have the solution now. Quickly, I know time is running short, and I have a flight to catch. I have to get back to Beijing tonight. Um, I think, actually, to be fair, and uh, there is a fundamental transformation uh, starting now in China, mm. in this part of the world, towards a green and low-carbon future. The vision is set very clearly by the top leadership in China, which is very encouraging, very exciting. And uh, I, I'd also say, to be fair, that the first step is already taken, starting from the 11th five-year plan, as Professor Hu Tao mentioned already. We started uh, to learn how to address energy efficiency, how to invest in renewable energy, alternative energies. So I would say, actually, the first steps are already taken. Uh, 
but there's the other side. The journey will be very difficult. It's long, it's very difficult. It's, it would never be easy, particularly uh, taking into consideration the size and complexity of this country. We have more than 1.3 billion people. If you look at the size and the scale of the economy, the complexity of the different development levels, everything like that, it will never be an easy journey. And uh, so actually the attention, rather than say blaming each other, I think more constructively, at, at least from where I stand, I would like to see actually more constructive dialogue, discussion, and even collaboration among countries, between countries, and really trying to understand the difficulties, the desire, and uh, even the, you know, the willingness actually from China's side, trying to figure out how to work with China to really make the journey you know, kind of a little bit smoother so that we were gonna get to where we want to be. Often, I would look at China in 2020. Um, I, last year, about a year ago, I was more optimistic than I am today, meaning back then, I'm more, I was more excited about the political will, desire, willingness, and things like that. I've captured actually working from Beijing on behalf of the Climate Group, which is an international organization based in China. Actually, I run the China operations. But more and more, actually, when I got deeper into uh, the cities, the regions, getting into facilities, understanding the difficulties, my heart started to second a little bit and you know, started feeling heavy. Heavy meaning, yes, the direction is clear, but the journey will never be easy. But that's exactly where we need more help, more support, more collaboration. We could compete, but more importantly, actually, is a collaboration because we have to address the climate change challenges, which is a kind of, you know, we have only one planet, we have figured out how to protect our planet, Mother Earth, and this is where we start today, and hopefully we're gonna work more closely together. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I cannot see any better way of ending this panel. Thanks so tremendously for, for all your input. I think, Hu Tao, you, you, you put the real knock on what we need now. It's a deep partnership between science, policy, and business to move forward and simply follow China on a very promising journey. Thanks a lot, and uh, thank you, panel. Thanks all of you for heading into this discussion, and hands over to our Masters of Ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>